بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Trying to compare people on earth with the one who has everything and with the poorest person on earth so the wealthiest and the poorest how many differences are there? How many grades and levels of comfort and life and so on? It's a huge gap. Now, Allah Almighty told us in the Holy Quran that the hereafter has even more grades and more differentiations. This is the same in hell and in heaven. And in heaven, there are many grades. And they are not on the same level. So for example, we know about the steps or levels linked with the verses in the Holy Quran. So which, with each verse, Allah Almighty raise you one grade in paradise. We know about the 100 different levels for the shuhada, the martyrs. We know about the rooms uh, that the Messenger وسلم, told us about that are transparent, seen from inside and from outside and uh, for specific people. We know about a higher place called Illin, which is specific. By the way, these rooms, the people of paradise see them as you see the shining star to the east or to the west. It's not the same place. Then we have Ali, which is higher even for the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs and people who are afflicted with the trials and tribulation in this life, but they are patient. And then we have a place, very specific place, in the highest point ever. One single place named Al Wasila. The Messenger وسلم, asked us to pray to Allah Almighty, beseech Allah Almighty to grant the Messenger Muhammad وسلم, this place in paradise, Al Wasila. So the people asked him, What is Al Wasila? The Messenger وسلم, said, It is the highest grade in paradise, highest place. And it is befitting for one single person among the slaves of Allah Almighty. And I am hoping that I will be that person. So that is why we are praying to the Messenger, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa after every adhan to grant him al wasila the highest place in paradise. Now in exchange, if you do that, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa promised that he will intercede for you in the hereafter. So it's a win-win situation. Now, there are some people who were chosen by Allah Almighty, the Prophets and Messengers. Then, there are the followers and the companions of the prophets and messengers chosen also by Allah Almighty. So the first that comes after the prophets and messengers are the Sahaba. Of course, we didn't get that. So that was chosen by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at the time of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Still, it doesn't mean you do not wish that or no, that you were there to defend the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to believe in him and support him and struggle with him. But all is not lost. You still have many opportunities. And among them are two. The first one is to be among the brothers of the Messenger ﷺ. That might sound very strange. But actually the Messenger ﷺ made one very strange dua. And uh, to the people who, who died, at the end he said one strange phrase. He said, I hope that we have seen our brothers. So the Sahaba were surprised. He says, aren't we your brother, or Messenger of Allah? The Messenger وسلم, said, you are my companions, my Sahaba. Our brothers are people who will come late and they will believe in me and they have never seen me. SubhanAllah. Anyone who believes in the Messenger وسلم, he was not there. You didn't see him. You only heard about him. You believed in him and you followed him. So that is why the Messenger وسلم, gave this beautiful status. Furthermore, now the followers of the Messenger وسلم, there are two groups. 
one who are having it easy to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not afflicted with trials and tribulations and difficult times and people against them in the societies and so on. Those people will have great rewards. The rewards, they will not be compared to the Sahaba, but they will get rewards high as the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Abu Ubaidah Amr bin al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu, he asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, are there any people who are like us or better than us? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the people who will come at later time and they will follow and obey and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah. The other group are those who are afflicted with the trials and tribulation in their religion. During the times of fitan, the time when people are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the time when people do not like the sunnah and people who are practicing the sunnah, yet they are practicing the religion and the sunnah. The Messenger وسلم, gave an example, those who are trying to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, it is so hard, so difficult, it is like carrying life cool, burning cool, like holding onto it. And they are still holding onto their religion. The Messenger وسلم, said one of them will be having the reward of 50. So the Sahaba asked 50 among them. The Messenger وسلم, said, no, 50 among you, the Sahaba. 50 like you. Because it's so difficult upon them, yet they are trying hard to revive the Sunnah of the Messenger وسلم. So now, if we have lost being with the Messenger وسلم, in this life, at least we should strive to be with the Messenger وسلم, in the hereafter. And of course, the Messenger وسلم, is in the highest place in paradise. So it's a very difficult challenge, isn't it? You'll be in Jannah, yes, but where will you be? Where will we be? Where will the Messenger وسلم, be? So are there anything we can do to get closer to the Messenger وسلم, to be his companions in the hereafter? Yes, there are many. The first thing, and the lowest, because people who are with the Messenger وسلم, or close to the Messenger وسلم, in the year after are not in the same distance, same level. Is it clear? They are also grades and levels. So the least among them are those who are practicing their religion, doing the pillars of Islam, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they can, avoiding the sins and wrongdoings. A man came to the Messenger وسلم, he said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I have witness that there is no God but Allah and I have witnessed that you are the messenger of Allah and I have prayed my daily prayers and I have given my zakah and I have fasted the month of Ramadan. So, nothing, that's it, he stopped. Means, so what is for me? He wants something. The messenger وسلم, says, anyone who does that and dies upon that, he will be with the prophets and the messengers in paradise like this, Amen. but with one condition. The messenger وسلم, pointed with the forefinger and the one after it, the middle finger, and slightly parted between them in the narrations, and he, this will be repeated for many things. But there is one condition for this man. That condition is as long as he does not become disobedient to his parents. As long as he is good and kind to his parents. Because anyone who is disobedient, disloyal to his parents, Allah Almighty does not love him. Full stop. Why? Because your parents are the reason why you are alive. The reason of you, who you are. And they have taken care of you for such a long time when you were an infant until you became an adult and independent, isn't it? So now if you do not realize their favors upon you, what they have done for you, you do not thank them for that, you do not appreciate that, there is no way you are going to appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for you. Not truly. If you witness this in front of you, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done to you, you have not seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. You came and you found everything ready for you, isn't it? You need to search and learn. But your parents, you see it daily. Daily. So if you are not appreciating that, there is no way. 
So as long as the person is doing that and he is being obedient to his parents, inshallah, he will be with the Prophet and Messengers, means in a high place in uh, paradise. The second one. The second one is from the story of Rabi'a bin Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu anhu. Rabi'a had many stories with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, interesting stories. One of them is this. He was a slave, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bought him, set him free, and then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him the option of returning back to his people or staying with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He decided to stay and serve the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he was very loyal to that. He was a poor person, but he will stay at the door of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam needed anything, he will hurriedly bring it to him. So one day the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, ask me. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't like that anyone will do him any favor except that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will return the favor. So he will say this to many people, many of the Sahaba. So some of the Sahaba will ask him for some worldly benefit, for some food, some clothing, and so on. Rabi'a radiallahu an was a visionary. He was very ambitious. His demand was very strange. He spoke about himself, about this deliberation that had happened. In one narration he says, I asked the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi I said, give me some time to think. I'm not going to take it. This is an opportunity. I'm not going to waste it. Give me some time to think. He says, I was thinking to myself. And he said, the whole world, everything in the world is going to end. Which is a reality. Either you will leave it or it will leave you. Everything, everyone in this world. This is a reality in life. So he said, everything here is useless. So he thought, I should ask him about something in the hereafter. <clears throat> so when the Messenger وسلم, asked him, he said, I want to be your companion in the hereafter. <clears throat> the Messenger وسلم, said to him, or something else. Maybe there's something that you need now, because he was poor, he was broke. He said, there is nothing else. That's the only demand I demand. Nothing else. I want to be your companion in the hereafter. The Messenger وسلم, said to him, then help me upon yourself by performing lots of sujood. Sujood requires ruku. Ruku requires qiyam. The, whole, the concept is? Salah. Salah, yes. Because increase your salah, your nawafil, a lot. Why? Because there is nothing that will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and greats in paradise than the salah. In the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says you will never perform one sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah Almighty will raise you one grade in paradise and remove from you one sin. So he says, okay, help me. He will understand, yes, you want something, fine. Be ambitious. But it's not only wishing. You need to do. You need to work. So you want to be with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Fine. But you need to work for it. So help me with this. Next after that, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Sahaba one day. The surprise is not in the question. The surprise in the reply of the Sahaba. Or the lack of reply. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to them, Shall I not tell you about the most beloved to me, and the closest to me in the hereafter in place. None answered. No answer. They remained silent. The Messenger of Allah Sallam repeat that a second time. Either in the second time or in the third time, they replied, they said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, tell us. The Messenger of Allah Sallam said, The best among you in character in morals, in etiquettes, in dealing with people. That is the most beloved to the Messenger وسلم, in this world, the closest to the Messenger وسلم, in the hereafter. So that's a competition here. Because that is the sunnah of the Messenger وسلم. What was the description of the Messenger وسلم, in the Holy Quran? Allah Almighty praised him to be with the highest, at most. In what? In morals, in etiquettes. So the more you imitate him, the closer you get to him. The more beloved you will be to the Messenger of Allah Sallam, the more you will be with him in the here uh, after, inshallah. May Allah Almighty make us among them, inshallah. Uh, next, after that, taking care of the weak people in the society. And these are two different categories. The first category is within your family. 
within your family, you remember the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, the best dinar that you spend, the best money that you spend, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is which one? The one you spend upon your own family. It is not the money that you spend for jihad and struggling for the sake of Allah Almighty. Not the money that you give to the poor and to the needy. Not the money that you give to the orphans and so on. All of that is very important, yes. But the best out of all of them is the money you spend upon whom? Your own family. Because when a person is generous, when a person is good, when a person is compassionate and merciful, when a person wants to help people, the people that should notice this most are whom? The closest circle. Else he'll be doing it for some other reason. We don't know what that might be. Isn't it? So the Messenger وسلم, gave here. Now what is this has to do with the being close to the Messenger وسلم, In the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, he said anyone who take cares, uh, take good care of two daughters or two sisters or three sisters until they leave him means by marriage or by death or until he dies. The Messenger وسلم, said, he and I will be this close in paradise. <clears throat> because you are being merciful and good to people and taking care of them. The same is said about the other group, which is the orphans. Anyone who takes care of an orphan, he and I will be this close in paradise. The Messenger وسلم, pointed with his forefinger and the one next to it and slightly parted between them slightly parted between them now the next after that has nothing to do directly with the actions but it has to do with feelings and that is love for the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam remember the hadith of thawbar when we started with a man came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him, we'll continue the hadith of Tawban shortly inshallah. A man came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asked him. And the question that this man asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is strange because he asked him about the hereafter. He says, when is the hereafter? When is the hour? When it will happen? When is judgment day? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not answer him about this question because nobody knows except Allah Almighty, number one. Number two, there is no benefit for you in knowing when it will be if you are not ready. So what is practical is you need to be ready. Because the hereafter for every person is his death. Whether that is going to come sooner or later, you never know when. And that is what is important for you, isn't it? So here the Messenger وسلم, answered him with a different answer. The answer is beautiful in the Arabic language. It's called the style of the wise or the answer of the wise. The idea when somebody is asking you about something that is irrelevant to him, useless to him, or you do not know about it, then you guide him, you answer him with something that is beneficial to him. It's good. Beneficial to him. So when he asked him this question, the Messenger وسلم, said to him, what have you prepared for it? Are you ready? If he will tell him, okay, tonight it will be the hereafter, or tonight you will die and meet your Lord. Tomorrow. What is the difference? You're going to work for one hour, two hours, three hours maximum? That is not how it works. Like if you are asking the teacher, he says, there will be a quiz. Okay, a quiz, like a surprise quiz. Okay, fine, good. Sudden quiz, suddenly. Okay, so he's asking, when is that? Uh, even if I'll tell you, okay, now, or after five minutes. What is the benefit for you if you are not ready? Knowing the answer is useless if you are not ready. So here the Messenger وسلم, said to him, what have you prepared for it? The answer of the man is even stranger. The man, he says, I have not prepared for it much of the salah or psalm or sadaq. I don't have many things. Okay? But I love Allah Almighty and I love his Messenger, Muhammad وسلم. Now the answer of the Messenger وسلم, is even stranger. The Messenger وسلم, said to him, a person in the hereafter is with whom he loves. 
You love Allah Almighty, you love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will be with them in the hereafter. Anas radiallahu anh, the narrator of the hadith, he says, we are never happier with anything after Islam than with this hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, because I, I love Allah Almighty and I love his messenger and I love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I love Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and I love Umar radiallahu anh, and I hope to be with them in the hereafter although I didn't do like they did. We don't have much of worship. But now this opportunity is a great opportunity to us to be with them. And we say like Anas radiallahu anh, says, we love Allah Almighty, we love the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we love Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and Umar radiallahu anh, and Uthman radiallahu anh, and Ali radiallahu anh, and we love Anas radiallahu anh, and we pray to Allah Almighty to be with them in the hereafter insha'Allah, although we didn't do like they have done. That concept of feeling is very important. When Thawban radiallahu anh, Ask the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to him, what is going to happen to me in the hereafter? Where will I be? Even if I am in paradise, well I am not guaranteed that. But even if I am in paradise, where will you be? Where will I be? I cannot, I cannot feel tranquil. I feel so sad if I am away from you for a few hours in this world. What is going to happen in the hereafter? The Messenger وسلم, did not have any answer, so he did not answer him. Until Allah Almighty revealed in the Holy Quran, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And those who obey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and obey the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then those are with the Prophets and the Messengers and the Martyrs and the Righteous People. Amen. And those are the best company, of course. So obeying the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is the true love. Obeying Allah Almighty and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is what will get you, inshallah, closer to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, uh, the uh, last two points in this: the first one is after increasing your ibadah and the things that we have mentioned, you need to increase the du'a as well. Increase the dua. Increase the dua to be with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abdullah bin Mas'ud was very clever in seizing opportunities. One day he was praying. Nawafil prayer. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw him. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Ask and you will be given. Means this is an hour of when supplications are answered by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So ask and you'll be given. He sees the opportunity. What was his dua? Three points. Oh Allah Almighty, I ask you for Iman, faith that will never turn back. Firm faith. Beautiful. That is the most important thing. Great. Alhamdulillah. And then, and I ask you for favors and blessings that will never end. SubhanAllah. Beautiful. Okay. So the hereafter and this world. But then one thing is missing. He says, and I ask you to be the companion of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in paradise. Such a beautiful dua, comprehensive dua. So imagine suddenly, and now, now if somebody is asking us, this is the hour of the answer, ask, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the prayer? We don't know. You need to think about what is, the prayer is going to be. Because we do not have... A, an object, we do not have a goal, we do not know. Now one of the most important thing to aim for is to be the companion of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Final point which is linked to the day, to Friday, which is to increase the Salah upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Increase salutation and peace and blessing, sending peace and blessing upon the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, increase the salah upon me on Fridays. Increase means it should not be similar to the rest of your days. This is something that we are very lazy at. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically said to increase. Some scholar says increase, to reach an increase, to be a lot, the minimum is 300. Minimum. So it starts from 300. Before that, you have not increased much. Imagine, subhanAllah. 
He needs to increase. The Messenger وسلم, gave the reason. He says, because your salah upon me from my nation, all my nation, is presented to me on Fridays. Friday is presented to me. SubhanAllah. How is it presented to me? Allah Almighty has appointed an angel to carry every salutation and salah to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with your name and your father's name. Oh. oh Messenger of Allah, so the son of so is sending peace upon you. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will reply with your name and your father's name. So that is some of the scholars say, part of being obedient and good to your parents is to increase the salah upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is the link? So because your father's name will be mentioned. Your father's name will be mentioned to the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So increase the salutation. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now the link to the khutbah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, those who are the most in their salah upon me will be the closest to me in the hereafter. <coughs> The closest to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as you see, there are so many channels, so many opportunities to get closer to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to be among the companions of the Messenger uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hereafter. Part of it linked with the faith and the, the Iman and the pillars of Islam. Part of it is linked with dealing with your parents and your family members. And part of it with your good morals and etiquettes when dealing with others, all of them. And part of it about your own emotions and your feelings. And finally, about how much you love the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how much you sense peace and salutation upon him and how much you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give that. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in paradise, in a'la al in the highest point in al-firdaus al-a'la. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the rest of the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs and the righteous. Ameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.